Hi there. My name is Beth Green, otherwise known as Granny Rocks, and welcome to Grow. Tonight I'm going to talk about the soul and the ego again. Last time I talked about the soul and the ego, the not the avocado, the potato. And uh, tonight I'm going to be talking about the soul and the ego again, about starting to take the next steps. And I have a feeling this isn't going to be over tonight because this is going to be a big deal over the long haul. But before we get into the show, I would like to turn it over to... Sweet Baby James here, and you ain't heard nothing yet, as they say. <laughs> Granny's going to share her wit, her wisdom, and her uncommon sense with us yet again. And we're, we're airing every Monday and Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. So stay with us tonight and keep coming back. And now, here's Granny. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Last time, when I talked about the soul and the ego, I kind of started talking about where the ego comes from. You know, it's not just some, some devil. It's something that is natural and that is created out of our, um, our survival instinct. You know, we're scared and we're trying to look for ways of surviving. And then I described different relationships between the soul and the ego. And I said, you know, that the soul is like the inner being and the ego is what is trying to control the world or is stands between us and the world is to protect us, right? So then I uh, kind of gave you some examples. Helen says, Helen is here. Hello, Helen. Here one. Todd says, hi, hi Beth and James. Hi, hi, Dodd. And Tracy says, hi. Oh, hello. And a couple of oh, hearts of love. This oh, that's so nice. Mm, no, nice to see you all already. Nice. We don't feel alone. <laughs> so... I talked about, for instance, the relationship between the soul and the ego can be like a nut, you know, where there's a hard shell and the soul is inside, you know, and then there's this nut and you have to like <laughs> crack it open and it's not easy and all of that. And so that's the ego being out there trying to take care of us, acting tough, being God knows what, you know, uh, trying to be, as I said, tough, hard, strong, hard shelled, hard -shelled you know. And, um, and I talked about how people like that often have been raised in very abusive situations or scary situations where they really feel afraid and they have to, they believe they have to put on this hard shell or they're going to get dominated. Uh, and then I talked about avocados who were people who are still protecting themselves with a skin or a facade, like this is my face. But it's soft, you know, you take the knife, you put it through and you get the avocado underneath and Luann just waved and we're going to wave right back at you. And Luann. to Lizzie as well. Lizzie says hello and hello, hello Lizzie. So um, now the, the people who have grown up as avocados have a tendency to like pretend they're something that they aren't, but not so much a hard shell as like they want to please mom. So they're pretending like they're like this or please dead or they please society so they have a facade that really doesn't have anything to do with them so and then the third kind is the potato which is um much more inside outside you know the potato has its skin but it's all edible whereas the avocado you can't eat the avocado skin you certainly can't eat the nut but the whole potato is edible but it still has a skin so those are people who tend to be more self-disclosing people maybe in therapy or they're self-aware but there's still that separation between the inside of the potato and the outside of the potato and then i invited us all to uh think about who we were and tammy just said howdy howdy, howdy Matt. Tammy. and debbie says hi beth and james hi hello, debbie hello. and karen is here and, and says from karen, huh? hi and you too back. and hi yes hi to you too so I sort of challenge you to to uh, spend the next couple of days since our last show, which was Monday, to think about are you a nut, an avocado, or a potato? But also I talked about that what we're really going for is being like water because water has no inside and it has no outside. Water is water. You know what I mean? So it is what it is, and that's 
wonderful and it flows and it's so divine. Um, and Donna said, hi, folks, I am back. Welcome well, I'm back, so Donna. glad to see you, Donna, because we're on to our next show about the ego and the soul. So I'm uh, just kind of recapping a little bit what we were talking about last time. So, uh, and then I talked about how when you are the water, the power is in the collective. It's not the one molecule of water that has the power. So the ego thinks it has the power because it's in charge, right? But, you know, you try to compare one little ego with the ocean, and I mean, you are like nothing. Now, tonight I want to, I, I would like to follow up on if anybody has had a thought about whether they are a nut, an avocado, a potato. Nobody is water yet. I don't think even the Dalai Lama, you know, because we've all been raised. Oh, and the people who are, raise who who are more like potatoes are people who had much more compassion and understanding and love in their lives than the people who you know have nuts uh shells that are so thick and but they're all egos right they're all egos they're still trying to figure out how to manipulate the world to take care of the me and i think i mentioned last time that i have a book called living with reality it is a free download on the website beth Green org that's b e t h g r e e n dot org and you can get one of those books you can get living with reality as a pdf version and the first chapter really is devoted to ego instinct and evolution and it's really really interesting and the whole book is about evolving and by the way we have a free discussion group every saturday morning at nine nine to ten a.m pacific time if you care to uh uh, come on in on that uh, as a conference call, a video conference. And that's about a dis free discussion group about the book, Living with Reality. And uh, Richard uh, is our liaison, and it's all the information is in the post. I am not at that, uh, that program. So Elizabeth says, I'm an avocado, right on. And Helen says, I vacillate between all of them. Very good. And hopefully you're gaining some knowledge of when you turn into a nut, when you turn into an avocado, when you turn into a potato. So um, I think I'd like to take on a little bit more information and then maybe we'll come back if people want to talk about that if we have enough time today. And as I say, there is, we're, I'm going to be talking about the ego for a while now. Okay. Now, it helps us to recognize where we are with our egos because we can see that there is a real separation between the ego, which is running the show for most of us, telling us what we should choose, presenting itself to the world, trying to manipulate the universe, and the inner self, the, the soul. And we are blocked from connecting to our inner selves really badly. And the soul really wants to be at one with itself. It wants to be water. You know, it really does want to be water. But the ego doesn't want us to go there. And so I'm looking at the question of why it's so hard for us to become one with our inner selves. So the first thing is that the ego blocks us at every turn. Our ego blocks us at every turn. Every time we start to get close to our inner selves, the ego turns on the alarm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am not kidding. It's like, danger, danger, danger. Right. You know, so supposing you grew up in an environment where people were shooting each other. Oh, Todd says he's going from avocado to potato. Very good. That, that's exactly mine. That, that is that, really great. It. That's really great. I want to get us to the point that we're all going from potatoes to water, but you know, <laughs> let's see what we can do before I die, right? Okay, so if you've been brought up in a dangerous area, if there's been abuse in the house, if the neighborhood is scary, uh, if there's been physical abuse uh, or uh, you know emotional abuse, if you have really been, or if you've grown up in a war zone, I mean, uh, you are really scared really scared to let down guard your guard that's why the ego is so strong and so brittle now 
if you are even if you're just the avocado you're still trying to please somebody you're putting on an external thing to make people think you're let's say you're gay and uh, you don't feel safe in your a nation being gay and so you're going to be an avocado for sure for sure if not worse because you've got to put on some kind of a facade that's going to make other people think that you're not gay so you see what i mean so if you start connecting to yourself and saying well let's say you're a guy and you decide that you want to go out uh with a feather in your hair uh and people are getting arrested or killed for being gay i mean that's really a lot you know scary and the alarm bell is going to go off but it's not just something that extreme i mean the same kind of thing happened to us when we were children if we become avocados there's a reason that we have decided to go to that place to put on a face that's going to make people see us in a certain way or that will make people maybe even respect us or be afraid of us or something so many men have facades even if they're not all walking around trying to pretend that they're the incredible hulk uh they still may not be willing to show their insides outside right and uh the people who are the potatoes who are even aware of that there's still that fear because the ego will say that if we are totally exposed we will not survive this world is a loony place and so the ego is going to make us feel afraid it's going to sound the alarm okay now if our ego isn't blocking us at every turn which it is other people's egos will feel threatened and block us at every turn let's say you are an avocado turning into a potato you are creating a new paradigm of how to be in the world and people aren't going to like that because they're going to say oh no i'm not going to do that oh that's too scary or that's too sissy or that's too shrill that's too aggressive that's too whatever it is that you're trying not to be and um they're going to see you as breaking out and you're threatening their egos that are telling them oh no it's you know let you let's say you are breaking out and you've become at least a potato and and and, and there's the, and their ego says that's dangerous and you're saying yeah but that person is doing really well you know it seems to me that the last time i saw margaret she was a changed person she was so relaxed she was happy she was laughing she was talking about things she wasn't hiding her weaknesses or anything like that i think that is really cool and the ego says oh no oh no something is wrong there because see it's going to lose its grip if you see other people getting better doing this your ego is going to say uh -uh, danger zone danger zone danger zone it's losing grip i have seen this i just was running a group the other day where somebody was actually becoming more going from avocado to potato and um nobody asked this person how they were doing it you know why because the ego is telling you ah, don't go there you're going to have to do something really scary this is going to be terrible so not only does our ego block us but someone else's ego is also feeling threatened or the whole group let's say you know you've grown up in a white supremacist mentality and you say you know that's kind of dumb race doesn't even exist there's only you know how much what do they call it uh, not melatonin is in your skin but whatever it is <laughs> anyway that stuff that makes your skin darker or lighter you know that's all it is that's what skin color is all about so um so you see the ego of a whole collective can be threatened when somebody starts to tell the truth now i'm going to get back to that in a minute now our selves now we're we're talking about why it's so difficult to to uh connect to ourselves even though that is the deepest desire of every soul is to be connected with themselves and then with everybody with others with the universe but ourselves can be afraid to bust a move because we feel exposed see so it's like ooh i'm afraid i'm afraid this is going to this is going to hurt me because i was hurt when i was 12 years old or when i was 2 days old i don't even remember what hurt me but i but i was hurt and something made me scared so i'm just scared of everything all the time i'm just scared 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 and i don't even know why and then 
it may be hard for us to connect with ourselves because we can get confused. We don't even know what it looks like. What would that look like? What is connect to yourself? Now, I'm going to tell you a little thing that happened to me today. One or yesterday. I can't remember. It was one or the other. If you're on YouTube where we archive uh, our grow shows, um, she wrote to me that she didn't agree with me or she was concerned because she felt like, I was talking about the collective and because I had talked about the water and the power of the water is in the oneness, you know, with like the water, the ocean, the, the rivers can move, the mountains and all of that. And so she thought I was talking about the collectives and how nasty and mean and vicious and scary collectives can be. Do you know what I'm talking about? I mean, like the lynch mob is the best example. But, you know, there's a whole bunch of kids in the schoolyard and there's a bully and everybody gets on his side and all of that. It's very, very damaging. That is not the soul. That is the collective ego. Right? So here, the ego is trying to confuse us. That's not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about oneness. I'm not saying that we should get together with all the other white people against the black people <laughs> or all the other black people against the Hispanics or all the gays against the straights, or all the women against the men, or you know, all the puppies against the cats. That is not what I'm talking about. That is the collective ego. We are still in our ego, but now we're in the collective of the ego. That is not what it means to connect to our souls and feel connected to the all in that soul way. So, the ego of Americans, the ego of sorority sisters at uh, Phi Delta Gibble, uh, the ego of viewers of football. How do, uh, now, how do we know these are egos and not souls? Because they are always opposed to something. It's always, even if they're not saying they're opposed, it, it, it is this as opposed to that, right? I am white, not black. right? I am a woman, not a man. Now, the truth of the matter is that I have male energy, female energy. God knows what my DNA actually looks like. And, uh, you know, all of us have red blood, unless you're a blue blood. Like <laughs> so anyway, so we know that that is not what I'm talking about. So I want to talk really fast now about um, oh, okay. I want to talk very quickly about how to get unconfused. Because as I said, the ego is going to tell us we don't want to connect to ourselves, our inner selves. It's too dangerous, right? Or someone else's ego will say it's too dangerous. So what I'd like to do really quickly is go over some ways that we know that, we're, that this is the ego talking, right? The ego is always this as opposed to that. I've already talked about that. The ego looks for differences. It's always about, oh, Ryan says hello. Oh, how nice to see you, Ryan. I'm afraid you've come in at the end. I hope you watch the replay. So the ego looks for differences, like who's bitter? Who's bitter? Who's inferior? Who's, who's taller? Who's skinnier? Who's, who's stupider? Who's smarter? Who's more talented? Who's, so the ego is always looking for differences. That's a, a sure sign that we're talking to the ego. The water isn't doing that. The water is the water is the water is the water. This drop of water, that drop of water, you know what I mean? They're all drops of water, right? The ego lives in a paradigm of dominance and submission. There's ladders and hierarchy. It's always like, this is higher than that. This is lower than, even if you think you're worse than everybody else, that is still ego because it's based on how we're different and this ladder of power or powerlessness. The ego thrives on conflict. If you find yourself constantly finding a reason to argue with somebody or pick a fight or whatever it is, you probably in the ego because the ego says, yeah, because now I have a chance to win uh, or I'm going to lose and then I can resent that for the rest of my life. Um, the ego wants us to be afraid. Oh, that is really important because remember, the ego was born with our survival instinct. 
that means it needs us to be afraid. If we're not afraid that we're going to die, then what has it got to say? You know what I'm saying? It's, its job is to protect our survival. Well, we have to be constantly afraid of our death. Now, you know, it's not like life is so easy, but, you know, it's not a good idea to live in constant fear. You know, that is a sure sign that the ego is there and it's manipulating us. And so the ego does not want us to connect to our souls because we might not fit with the ego's agenda. So what I've covered tonight is I kind of recapped a little bit the last show about uh, the nut, the avocado, and the potato, and the water, about our relationship between the soul and the ego. And I've talked about why and how the ego tends to block us from connecting to the deepest part of ourselves. And I just want to sort of summarize how where we want to end today by saying, First, I've given you some of the signs that we're in our ego. See, if we start recognizing the signs, we're not going to be such patsies of the ego. It's not going to be able to push us around as much like the bully in the schoolyard, right? And then I'm suggesting that we remember any time in our lives where we didn't feel dominated by the ego, where we were just the water flowing, connecting, we were exactly the same on the inside as we were on the outside. I mean, the exactly the same. I, I don't mean like I'm the potato, which is now disclosing to you, oh, well, this is how I'm feeling. It's like there is no separation because, see, I'm controlling that disclosure. Do you know what I mean? It's like, okay, I'm going to tell you this about me. And now you're going to tell No, I mean, just like if you're just one with yourself, you just are because you're the water. You're the same on the outside and the inside because there is no inside and outside or upside or downside. Anyway, so if we could remember a time, maybe a time when you were with a baby and you just felt like all of your defenses were down. That may have been yours. Or you were listening to music and or you were with your lover and you couldn't remember that feeling where you couldn't tell where one person's body ends and the other one begins. That feeling, guys... It's not being connected to others. It's really being connected to ourselves because that is what it is because when we are connected to ourselves, we are just connected and we feel so like, oh, peaceful. There's a sense of peace and well-being when we have that connection to ourselves and it doesn't last, not for most of us. And for some of us who've been severely traumatized, it doesn't last long at all. But let's remember that. So I've given you some signs that you're in your ego. Right now I'm giving you some signs about when you're connected to yourself that you feel more peaceful and more relaxed. And it's kind of amazing because you're not dominated by that constant fear. And if we want to feel that again, then we are going to do everything that we can <coughs> to connect to our deepest selves, to our souls. And that's what I'm inviting you to do. And I invite you to come back to the next show on Monday because I'm not done. No way. We are just scratching the surface of the ego and the soul. And I hope that you have enjoyed this. Uh, and um, uh, not only is there a Saturday morning uh, discussion. meeting, discussion group, for the Living with Reality book, which is really, really a good book. It has a tremendous amount of information. It's very deep. It's very it, long. It's a manual for self-improvement and self-transformation. It is. And it's free. You know, what can you say? It's free. And so there is a discussion group that's also free. And all that information is on the post. And we also have a discussion group on Wednesday nights, which I do lead. I am there. There is a fee, but the first time is free. And you might want to consider coming to that because that way you really start to delve deeper into these things. And I will help you with my intuition. Also, I want to announce that tomorrow night, you know, we're doing Dreams of Peace, which is our uh, music, my piano live stream, where I connect my soul to your soul. And if you like that music, that means that somehow or other you are connecting to your soul because that music is coming from my soul to yours. So anyway, tomorrow night we have a special treat. 
We hope it's a treat. And so we hope that we see you either live or on the replay. So until tomorrow or Monday or any time that you can get to us. The ego doesn't have to win. It really doesn't. Love you all. Oh, and we have something. I would say soul is a fire inside us. And the ego is the shining of this fire. So the more we are gathered, the more light gets bigger and larger. The light within us does get bigger and larger as we become more connected to our souls. Thank you for writing to us, whoever you are. I can't say your name because it looks like it's in Arabic or Farsi or something. Thank you. Anyway, thank you so much. And see you again soon. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you for the loves and likes. And please share this program. Please, please, please share, 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 share. The ego needs people to wake up. Bye-bye. <laughs>